Hey y'all, so this is an interesting video because as you all know, um, <laughs> group of us who are doing this video or have done this video in the past where we ended up reading all of the Goodreads Choice Award winners from 2013 to 2022, although I read 2012 to 2022 because I can't math. But this year we wanted to read all of the or read as many of the nominees as possible before uh, we got to the winner, um, which is I think announced on December something, December something. December 4th maybe that's the not me sitting here clicking as an introduction to this <laughs> a winners are announced on December 7th okay so trying to read all of the things before the winners are announced on December 7th which is a very very tight turnaround um I um like everyone else learned that they cut categories this year and all the categories that they cut were my favorite categories. Um, the categories where I thrive. And it's a huge, 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 huge disappointment. Um, so since there is no comic slash graphic novel um, category, uh, and there's no middle grade category, no poetry category, a few of us decided to come up with our own titles that we would read that we would then kind of determine would be the best. Now this is not for me at least I can't speak for anyone else. This was kind of difficult because you know Goodreads is not explicitly clear on how they determine what books are, are nominated for um, each of their categories but I decided to after talking to Kara a little bit about how she did hers. Um, I decided to think about graphic novels that had um, at least um, a thousand reviews on Goodreads or at least close to a thousand reviews um, on Goodreads and I also tried to pick titles that I think naturally had gotten a lot of traction throughout um, the past year and so of course there's going to be some titles on here that you are going to be familiar with and some that you're not. Some of these titles I actually have read and I, a lot of the titles I generated um, by using Goodreads um, as a tool for their best graphic novels that have released in 2023 um, or graphic novels that released in 2023 which I think are more so like user um, generated list but that is fine. I even went and looked at like their most read for the week um, the graphic novel that had been tagged new releases and I was able to come up with 20 different titles that I think would have been possibly contenders um, for um, the opening round of this. So I'm just going to quickly go through the titles. Um, some of these, like I said, I have read. Um, I think for the majority of these I actually have not read and that is a okay. Um, I am going to try to get to as many of these titles as possible. Now keep in mind, unfortunately, that um, this is going to be an access situation. So if I can't get to it via my library, I do not plan to buy any of these titles. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how everything works out. So the first title that I have on my list because I think that this title to be honest with you if I was thinking about this in the grand scheme of things this title probably would have won um, and I added Laura Olympus volume 4 I do not have any of the same series listed on here I know that they have done that in the past um, I am not doing that here so Laura Olympus was volume 4 is the first one that that was published this year I know volume 5 also came out this year but we are just going to go with Laura Olympus volume 4 I also have Project Not in Limbo Hungry Ghost, which I have read, The Princess and the Grilled Cheese, which I have not read completely. I think I'm like halfway through it. Um, North Anger, which I was very interested in. Lights, which is Sheets book number three. Layers, which is a nonfiction graphic novel. The Many Deaths of Layla Starr, and this is the deluxe edition of it. If I cannot find the deluxe edition via my library, I will just read the issues that are supposed to go within the deluxe issue. Um, the Talk, um, A Guest in the House, Something's Killing the Children, Volume 6, which has gained a lot of traction and popularity. 
Parachute Kids because this is a middle grade graphic novel that has gotten a lot of reviews attached to it. Uh, number 14 is Family Style. Number 15 is Sunshine, which is another one that also is more of a middle grade graphic novel that has gotten a lot of traction. A Nice House on the Lake, Volume 2. Um, Night Fever. The Moth Keeper, which I've been meaning to read for forever. Um, Mimosa. And then Paper Planes. So those are the 20 titles that I am going to be trying to read within the next couple of weeks. This is going to be interesting because I also have stuff that I am trying to read just in general for this channel. Um, so I'm going to try to fit in as many of these titles as possible. I have only read one of the titles on this list. No, two. I've read two. Let's see, I thought I read more than that, but I've only read two of the titles on this list. So I literally, two and a half, if you want to count the princess and the grilled cheese um so yeah the <laughs> two and a half out of 20 um i'm going to start because i can tell you already what i have on libby what i already checked out in anticipation of doing this project i already have the princess and the grilled cheese checked out i lied I've, i'm 58 percent of the way through that um i thought i was only like 40 something percent and i also have paper planes checked out um so those are two those are probably the first two i think i can get in limbo also on Libby. I think we have that as a, as a Libby title. Um, but I will see. I will see what else. I think I have room for about maybe two more checkouts. So I'm going to see if I can find two more. But I know for a fact I'm going to start with The Princess and the Grilled Cheese. And then also, um, how did I forget the title that quick, y'all? Paper Planes. Those would be the two that I'll start with. Um, so as I... Um, have more updates i will let you all know and i will check in hey y'all this is this is you know what the best laid plans the best laid plans okay so i shot that first clip right and i was like i had those 20 books correct all right and these 20 books and i'm like these are going to be my 20 i'm going to go with these 20 and you know um I think these are the ones that will be nominated. Well, come to find out. One, your girl don't have money like that. So I didn't even really think about the fact that if I could not get access to it via the library or one of the gajillion apps that I have, um, I wasn't going to be able to read it. <laughs> I didn't think about that. And there were probably about four or five titles on there that I was like, you know what? Um, yeah, th yeah, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't really think that out. So here's what I did. I went back and I kind of rehashed some things. And I started looking at more graphic novels that released in 2023 um, that would have possibly, that got have gotten over a thousand reviews um, or close to a thousand reviews and probably would have been nominated. There's a high probability that they would have been nominated for uh, good good read choice awards these are also titles that i think um have a lot of traction popularity outside of just the graphic novel and comic reading community so i tried to keep all that in consideration and then i ended up like checking out all this stuff on libby so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be reading as many 2023 new releases that that i can possibly think of um that would be good contenders for the good reach choice awards i'm still going to stick to the list that i originally discussed in the beginning of this video but there's probably going to be some additional titles here and there because at the end of the day i don't know their methodology methodology the sword methodology i don't know the methodology for how they select titles um so i don't know if they are looking at and i probably should look into this more i probably will look into this after i get finished filming this clip but prior to this i don't think i've ever been like consciously not i don't want to say consciously aware i haven't really understood that's a better way to put it i don't think i've ever understood how goodreads makes their determinations on what can and cannot qualify except for the dates but I feel like popularity has a lot to do with it. Um, like how many people have rated, reviewed it, or added it to a shelf. Um, and I don't know whether it has to have a certain rating. Now, I've seen that shared, but I've never seen a statement like that come from Goodreads. So I don't know for a fact. But 
I did end up checking out some just additional additional stuff like Beowulf is a middle grade graphic novel that apparently got a lot of traction that I didn't even consider or think about. Hello. Um, I didn't, I don't think I talked about Basil and Oregano. I, that's a young adult graphic novel that's gotten some traction. The Infinity Particle has gotten some traction. Um, Bell of the Ball by Marie Costa. I didn't, I don't think I took that one up for consideration originally either. So there's probably going to be some additional things that I am going to take into consideration in terms of 2023 releases that may possibly be good contenders. Now, the issue, of course, with reading in such a broad age range is that technically I wouldn't really put a middle grade graphic novel up against an adult work. I think I, I review them on two different scales. I'm looking for two completely different set of criteria for each. But you know what? We're just going to do this the best way we know how. And at the end of the day, the goal and the aim of this is to really just showcase some banging graphic novels and comics that released in 2023 that people probably should pick up at some point. I'm just saying. I mean, it's worth a try, right? Um, so I did stick to my regular. Laura Olympus, of course, is going to be up there. As a matter of fact, I got some stuff from the library. Let me go get it so I can show it to you really, really quick. So like I said, I did end up getting Laura Olympus Volume 2. Um, volume 4 is going to be the volume that I am going to I think is the one that I think would be a nominee. They probably would nominate more than, more than volume four because they've done stuff like that before but I'm not. I think I'm just going to try to wake make my way up to volume four. Um, I can't get volume three and four from my library but I think I can still access these through what's it called through webtoons so we're just going to go that way. Um, I did pick up Layers, which was originally on my list. Um, I picked up Family Style, which was originally on my list, I believe. Um, Night Fever is one that I picked up. This is not what I was expecting with Night Fever at all. Um, and then I also picked up North Ranger, uh, which originally was on my list. I think I did check out some on Hoopla as well. Y'all, when I tell you I try to prepare myself, when I tell you the intentions were very, very clear and me trying to prepare myself to make this happen. Okay, so I did end up checking out The Nice House on the Lake Volume 2 on Hoopla, Lights on Hoopla, and Some Things Killing the Children Volume 6. So I have three things that are on Hoopla. It's a lot. There's a lot of things to read. I don't know how much of this stuff, like, you know. Some of this stuff is going to be really, really easy to get to. Because it's, it's, you know, the panel work is not as intense as I was anticipating. Um, some of it is going to take a little bit longer. Some of it I'm kind of like, I don't even know if I like the color palette of this. But it's going to be about the whole experience. The whole shebang. So we're going to do that. Um... We're just going to read and read and read and read and read until my time is up, which my time is up on this video is going to be posted on December 7th. So my time is going to be up on December 7th. So I literally have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have about 15 days to read as much as I can read. So we're looking at possibly like maybe two of these a day, which I think I can do it, but we're going to see. Um, I don't know what to start with. I'm just going to start. I don't know what I'm going to start with. I actually probably, uh, that's not the truth. I probably will go ahead and start with uh, The Princess and the Grilled Cheese because I have already started that. I've already read that. I just have been waiting for my hold to come back in for forever. Um, but I'm already 58% to that. So I probably will go ahead and finish that one up. Um, and then I may start Paper Planes next. And then maybe follow that up with In Limbo. So let's say those will be the three. Will I keep it to that? I definitely will keep it to the, the Princess and the Grilled Cheese. Hands down. Hands down. But will I keep it up after that? I don't know. Basil and oregano looks really cute to me. And that's starting to feel like a vibe. But we shall see. 
All right, y'all, let's start this journey, man. Like, I, listen, we're going to start this journey. Let's start this journey. All right, y'all, I'll be back when I have another update. Do something. Hello, so I've gotten some reading done. Shocker, 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 shocker. I have finished three things. Um, don't ask me where my original list is because <laughs> I have no idea. It's somewhere in this house, but I can't remember where I put the original list and it sucks. Okay, either way, um, I did end up reading um, The Princess and the Grilled Cheese Sandwich. Very, very cute. Um, this is definitely, I'm, I'm lingering between a four and a four and a half. I haven't decided yet. Um, probably more towards a four and a half. It was very good. Um, it focuses on a main character that wants to leave her, her area. So her father passes away and she does not want to marry a man and live up to these expectations that um her family has had for her and so her father says it's fine but if she disappears um she's gonna present as a man and she does so she goes to um the kingdom of formage i think it's the name of the kingdom all of this is based off of cheese and it's really cute why the author did this like their specific reasoning for creating centering everything about around cheese i thought it was very heartwarming and daring but you have to read the author's note to understand why um so um, she goes there. She's presenting as a guy. She meets um, the princess of Fromage, whose name is Brie. <laughs> and I should say that uh, the main character's name is is Lady Camembert. Camembert. However you say that, cheese. Um, and so she meets Brie, um, and Brie, uh, you know, is thinking that this is a. Um, is a man that she's dealing with and so it of course it complicates things because we see that Lady Camembert is comfortable presenting as a woman as a man um, they are coded as being very fluid with their gender identity um, and so it's about them having this connection the friends um, that they have that kind of help them work through um, their identities and then also like in positions of power I think this was a very unique element to this is that in positions of power um, 
it's almost like we we have a duty to to do the right thing and to make impactful changes and so we see that a lot with Bree's character where um she struggles with um understanding her own identity right and i think that her one of her closest friends who's a, a dress designer reminds her that you know you have the power to change things um you know how i identify how i wanted to live my life not wanting to be forced into a marriage how i wanted to own my own business and don clothes which was you know in the time that this is set is not acceptable for a woman to do without the support of a husband um you know then you have lady camembert who is expressing um gender fluidity but cannot do anything about it except exist brie has this power to make effective change in the way that people um see others uh whether you get punished for you know um being non-binary or just being free about your um your gender expression and i like that that like that was a part of the story that there was this you know with great power comes great responsibility type of situation because i don't think that we often recognize you know this idea of you know well you can't force people to speak out but sometimes people who have larger platforms or um are in positions of power have the wealth have are are a part of the system and can make changes it's like you should do the right thing for people when you have the power to do so and so i, I like that that was part of the discussion i love that all the characters my eyes on fire y'all i apologize i love that all the characters were named after cheese like lady kim and bear's right hand person lady in waiting whatever you want to identify her as is like her best friend um but also waits on her um is is feta <laughs> her name is feta like i just love that everybody's name was after cheese and then when you find out why the author made the decision um to to <laughs> Z use cheese as the foundation it just makes the story that much better um, definitely a cute fun uh ya um contemporary romance has some comedic elements to it as well but definitely a really cute ya contemporary romance graphic novel this one definitely would have made um the good Reese choice awards list in terms of its popularity um this book has almost close to 7,000 ratings um a lot of people have loved it um, I definitely see this one not only being picked as like one of the um, part of the semifinals, but also the finals. Um, I don't know if if this was up in the semifinals. I don't know if it would if it would take it in terms of like the award. Um, just be I think it'd be a close contender. But if I'm being realistic, I still do think that. Um, what is it? The, the the series with the the web comic and I can't even remember the name of the uh, Lore Olympus. I think that that one would still be a very regardless of whether it is the best or not. I think that if we're looking at popularity, I think that one has just a little bit more traction because it's had um, a lot of traction. But so did um, the Princess and the Grilled Cheese. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. All right. The um, next two that i ended up reading i just literally finished one maybe a couple hours ago um the first one that i ended up reading was paper planes by jenny wood i put this one on here because this one um was a 2023 release um it had over a thousand ratings um the ratings are above a 3.5 i'm not sure whether this would have been a contender but i do know that ya graphic novels are starting to get more traction especially why a contemporary graphic novels are usually ones that are very popular amongst people um this one fell flat for me for a couple of reasons so um i'm debating between a three um a three or a three and a half and right now i think i'm i'm leaning more towards a three so Paper Planes, it's two main characters. Um, they are close friends. They, um, they're close friends. They get into some trouble. 
you don't know what that trouble is because it's not stated at the beginning of the graphic novel, right? It is one that is slowly um, released by the writers of this. Um, how do I describe where I struggled with this one? I think that you're at first led to believe that you're dealing with two characters who, which they are, they are struggling with their identity but you would think that it all is in relationship to that but it's not all in relationship to that um and so you have um Leeton and Dylan and like I said they meet they become close friends something happens they end up at this camp um Dylan is non-binary Leeton Leighton it's either Leeton or Leighton Leighton I'm gonna say Leighton um Leighton is biracial as well um, Leighton, I think, is being coded as asexual, if I'm, if I'm understanding everything correctly. They do have some type of um, romantic connection, but Leighton's family is very traditional. Um, they have high expectations for Leighton because of the fact that her sister uh, kind of went off the beaten path and kind of did her own thing. but. Her mother and father have these really strict expectations for her that are kind of hard to stand by. Um, they're hard to live up to and so Leighton struggles. Um, but she meets Dylan and I think Dylan tries to give her the ability to live as herself, um, to live for herself. And it's clear that Dylan has very, very strong feelings for, for Leighton. And a lot of it has to do with um, them loving each other, but Leighton not being able to reciprocate the feelings that Dylan wants her to reciprocate. Where I struggled with this one is that I feel like um, a lot of the issues between Dylan's, um, between Dylan and Leighton are Leighton's parents' perception of Dylan, and not because Dylan is non-binary, but because Dylan comes from a lower socioeconomic status, which I was not, um, which I don't like, of course, but it does happen. I think that was realistic. But Lane is not a likable character, y'all. Like, I think I struggled a lot with Leighton because I feel like um, while the kind of the fizzling out of their friendship, um, this connection that they thought they might have had beyond friendship does realistically fizzle out. I feel like Dylan took on most of the responsibility for what happened and learned more from the situation in terms of growth, identity, um, loving themselves and being able to move past the relationship with Leighton. But I felt like Leighton was a very stagnant character who never really had to take responsibility for her actions. I think that there was this great conversation about how she struggles with fulfilling her parental expectations and that being asexual in a society where everything is inherently sexual is very difficult for her but in terms of the not recognizing um not <laughs> the fact that she there's no responsibility for her actions um she did take the l in the sense that she was willing to protect dylan but for some reason, I just couldn't connect with Leighton. And I just did not like the way that Leighton was written as a character. She was very difficult to like. Um, and I found it very difficult to understand what Dylan saw in her. Because they, I felt like, were a phenomenal character. Um, definitely had a lot of character growth throughout the course of the graphic novel. But I feel like Leighton just didn't have that same growth arc that Dylan had and so it made her difficult to like. I don't feel like she really learned um, much for, um, I didn't care much for her as a character. So, um, and there was of course no resolution with your parents, which I mean, it is it is realistic, but I don't know. I felt like things were more heavily weighted on Dylan's end. I did, I did like the artwork. Um, I like that this took place at a summer camp um, um, and definitely does look at the heartbreak that comes with losing friendship. 
because I think that we don't see that enough. We see a lot of romantic breakups that are illustrated in books for a young adult audience. But like I've said before, um, I think that friendship breakups can be just as, if not more heartbreaking uh, than romantic relationships. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. That one wasn't the best one. Um, I do think that this one would have been nominated for the semifinals, but I don't know if it would have made it to the final. At least for me, I wouldn't put it on the final round. Um, but it does have over a thousand ratings above a 3.5, so that's probably one. Um, the last one that I read um, definitely was, oh my gosh, this was a tough read. Um, this is In Limbo by Deb J.J. Lee. This is a, another YA um, graphic novel, but this one is more so a memoir. And in this one, we are following um, Deb's experience dealing with a abusive, I, I mean, I would classify uh, the behavior of her mother as being emotionally and verbally abusive. And these high expectations that her mother has for her um being um, a student in school and Deb is dealing with a lot so she is from um, Korea South Korea and they moved to the United States and so she ended up losing her ability to speak Korean um, she goes to Korean school but she just does not she's not picking up on the language as effectively as she did uh, when she was learning it as a child um, and she is a part of orchestra all of her friends are in orchestra um and she decides that orchestra is not a thing that she wants to do anymore which means that and her not wanting to um deal with orchestra anymore she's kind of making this move where she's deviating from her friend group which is something that she is not necessarily prepared for um and she deals with heavy mental illness that leads to both um suicidal ideation as well as suicide attempts and the her mother is horrible <laughs> in this um i i think that deb did say um that they did work with um their mom to get all of this stuff kind of like you know laid out um mom brother and dad but the depictions were just heart-wrenching to have your mother complain like what did I do wrong that I ended up with a child that has mental issues or actually she called her a psycho um, and did not want to hear therapists say like they're actually like you know your daughter is not psycho she's struggling with mental health and she needs to talk to somebody her mother was very mean like and she describes one part or one aspect of this book where she's saying like um I don't even know how to deal with my mother because she's so hot and she's so cold like one minute she's horrendous she's horrible she um is mean to me and then the next minute she's like oh I need to be this perfect mom which sometimes like reminds me of the dynamic that I have with my mom and it's not healthy it causes so many issues in your child where they just don't feel they feel insecure they feel like they can't talk to you they're scared to tell you anything because they feel like they're gonna get in trouble and so it just it's it's a really sucky feeling um so I kind of connected with Deb in that area but Deb also struggles with just like making friends and keeping friends and there's this element of like um, not only dealing with like your own mental illness, but how your mental illness will start to impact those around you, how it impacts friendships, um, how people perceive mental illness. She's dealing with, like I said, um, her being from Korea, coming to America, not feeling Korean enough, um, but also not feeling um, American enough, caught in between, not being able to speak Korean. There were a lot of great elements in this one, and it was it was tough um the artwork was oh my gosh the artwork was breathtakingly beautiful um i can understand why deb gave up orchestra and went into art like holy crap um 
the artwork is interesting um i thought she had some really great interesting commentary too on um the double eyelid surgery that um some people do get done um and watching deb kind of have this conversation with a close friend about like you, you know well why would you want to do that and just like it's just kind of a thing that happens um and uh, most people in her family and friends had gotten the surgery done and so she goes to korea to get you know she'd have to go to korea to get the surgery done so i thought there were some um interesting conversations around that i've heard a little bit about that before but i think reading it from her perspective was just really really great um yeah this was it was a good memoir this is a good nonfiction uh, memoir and i think in limbo fits perfectly because she's not only in limbo with her identity as being um both korean and american but also this limbo position that she's constantly in with her mom like it she's constantly in limbo with her mom and so i thought that was great um definitely gonna give um in between four or four and a half for that one too haven't i haven't quite decided yet so those are three that i finished um next up on the docket what do we have next um i do have bell of the ball potentially to pick up um i do have the infinity Par particle um basil and oregano and then uh beowulf are also those are ones that i have queued up next but I know that when I did my initial check-in, I also was telling y'all that I, um, I have quite a few things that I could be reading because I also have some stuff on Hoopla that I haven't read, which was Lights, The Nice House on the Lake, and Something is Killing the Children, Volume 6. So I also have those three to kind of dive into along with my physical reads. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to pick up next. I'm just going to go with it and just pick something up and then um we will go from there and i will check in with y'all later I know my plan like my plan is definitely still to read as many things as possible and I'm trying to I'm pulling up a list of what I have here I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten is that just ten it's just ten oh my god it's just ten okay so I have ten titles that I have read um either prior to starting this video that I think would have been in contenders or books that I've read that could be con that would have been contenders that I had not read and I think it's pretty 50 50 on the things that I have read and the things that I um, have not read so I will say that I did add two books to this list that I'm trying to think there are two books on this list that I don't think or maybe three that I had on this list that were not originally a part of what I would have considered but when I went back and I looked at them, and I looked at some stuff that I had read for the year, right? 
I was like, you know what, actually these could technically be contenders as well. I think that these would work as contenders, which is Four Eyes by Rex Ogle, which is kind of, a, I'm kind of double dipping because Rex Ogle technically also wrote this. Um, Rex Ogle is his pen name. Um, and I'm gonna talk about this one in a second. But also I didn't include School Trip, like, that released April of this year. That would have definitely, I think that because of the popularity of um, of School Trip, which is the third book in the New Kid series, I definitely think that that one would have made it. Now, would it have made it to the semifinals? I don't know, but we're going to go through all of the titles at the end of this video and decide out of everything that I read, what would be... Um, not what would, would it have made it, it would have made a semifinals. I said that all wrong. What would make the semifinals list, which if I read more than 20, then I would have to pare it down to 20. What would make the finals list and then what would I think would be the winner? I'm not going to lie to y'all. If it came down to it when it was all said and done, Laura Olympus probably would be the winner. Um, it would be between Laura Olympus and Heartstopper because those are of the, the two most popular graphic novels that people recognize um and if we're going over popularity how many people have added it to the shelf how many reviews and, and ratings it has laura olympus is already going to top all of these laura olympus easily sits at over you know twenty thousand reviews or at least twenty thousand ratings uh, most of these that i'm reading most of them don't even hit two thousand and so because Laura Olympus and Heartstopper have become so recognizable, it does not shock me nor surprise me that they are consistently the ones that would be the top winners, especially with the TV show um, of Heartstopper, the second season recently releasing. And then you have with Laura Olympus, just the fact that it appeals to a very broad range of people who love things like romanticine since it got its own category this year, I would not be surprised if those two would have went head to head. Now, Heartstopper technically would have never made the list because Heartstopper does not release until this month. So Heartstopper wouldn't have made the cut by Goodreads standards. And with Laura, with Heartstopper being out the way, we know for a fact that Laura Olympus probably would have been the winner. But the purpose of this video, and I keep questioning my method methodology behind all this because I don't understand Goodreads methodology. <laughs> at all I, I don't um is purely based off of like read as much as i can within this time period at least being 20 titles um knocking those 20 titles out the park and then seeing like how would i rank them what would have been on the semi-finals list what would be on the finals list even knowing that laura olympus would probably be the winner and plus this is a good way to give y'all some recommendations of stuff outside of what's getting a lot of traction um, so I'm saying that most of the ones that I've read, people are familiar with, especially the young adult. Young adult graphic novels are becoming a a, a, a huge thing now. Um, not saying that there haven't been comics or graphic novels that have been great for a young adult audience, but there are graphic novels now with like imprints that are specifically focusing on targeting a young adult audience. So... For example, The Princess and the Grilled Cheese, that would have been a tough contender. I don't think it would beat out Laura Olympus, but it is one that is very recognizable and one that people probably would um, would gravitate towards. Another issue that I have with my own methodology in all of this is that I am combining both adult, young adult, and middle grade in this. There's going to be a problem with that because naturally what is great for a middle grade audience is not going to be great for an adult audience and vice versa. And so it's kind of hard to compare. They're all fruit, but it's apples versus oranges in this, you know. Yes, we're talking about the same medium, but we're talking about two very different fruits that have two very different tastes and give people two very different experiences down to texture wise. And that's the best way that I know how to explain it. So this by no means, and I hope, you know, if you're watching this, this by no means is a perfect method, nor does it replace uh, what Goodreads has done in the past. But I just want these books to be recognized in some way. And I know Goodreads is a good way for people to get um, attention for their works. Um, 
especially when you're thinking about a medium that doesn't necessarily get a lot of promotion, doesn't get a lot of airtime, um, it's considered to be especially niche. Traditionally in the past, it's been considered not to be real reading. Some people still don't feel that way. Um, some people look at graphic novels, manga, and comics now still and feel as though they don't compare to, you know, your average prose book, which is unfortunate. So the main emphasis, and I, I'm doing this again, I'm kind of, it's like I've done three introductions in this whole entire video. I'm saying this again because I have to keep reminding myself that this is mainly for exposure. Um, this is in and fun and in and, and games and hopefully getting um, some people to pick up some stuff maybe that they wouldn't have picked up. Now, with that being said, I have completed two other things, um, which is North Ranger and then also Layers. Um, so North Ranger is a young adult. Um, these both, I think, this is upper YA. Content wise, I think this would be upper YA. Um, this is young adult. This is based a little bit on, um, this is Ray. Ray is the creator's name, but Ray also has a pen name, Rex Ogle, which is what I'm more familiar with him as, is Rex Ogle. And this is uh, about kind of, it's not semi-autobiographical, but it is based on some of the experiences that he had growing up in Texas as um, a queer teen. And so in this one, we're specifically following uh, two main characters. Well, primarily our, our main character, Cade, here. So this is Cade. Um, and Cade ends up um, having to go to this ranch during the summer. So his mom has remarried and his stepdad and his stepdad's daughter, his stepsister, has they've, they've lived together for a while, but they're coming across some hard financial times. And so to help with the family finances, his mom's pretty much like, hey, you're gonna go to your stepdad, you're gonna go work at this ranch. And Kate is like, I'm gonna do what? <laughs> and at the same time, you know, through Kate's internal dialogue, you know that he is struggling with coming out to his parents. Um, he's not comfortable at all. He's definitely, he's struggling a lot, a lot. But when he gets to this ranch, and I wish I could remember this poor, um, <laughs> I wish I could remember this poor character's name. I'm horrible with characters' names. Um, Henry. It's Caden Henry. So he meets Henry. And there's this instantaneous type of like attraction between the two of them. And it's interesting because Cade is very, very interested in horror movies. He loves them. And so is Henry. But when I read the author's note, because I was like, North Ranger is definitely close to Northanger Abbey and I was wondering if this was going to be a retelling of Jane Austen's novel and in fact it is a retelling of Jane Austen's it's a reimagining of Jane Austen's um novel so in this basically what we're seeing is like in Jane Austen's novel where the main character ends up you know reading too many gothic novels and imagining all of them as these uh these monsters you're seeing the same thing with Cade who has this obsession with horror novels I mean horror movies until he starts imagining the fact that Henry and his family have committed some horrible atrocities which is you know I'm not going to spoil it because you have to read in order to figure out where it is but it's it's very interesting but also there is this kind of like um paralleling with the horror of being gay in a small town especially a conservative small town and so I like that we do get this kind of dialoguing from Kate that's like I cling to horror movies because it's so much like my experience being gay being in Texas in a small town and also being gay and and a Latino like it's there that's a lot there's a lot going on there um, this definitely was well written. I was very interested in uh, the choice for the color palette. It definitely sticks to the same hues that you see on here. It's it's not very different. Um, this does have some content warnings for it for 
um, homophobia, misogyny, racism, domestic violence, animal cruelty, and confronting death. It's a lot and Rex acknowledges, sorry, Ray acknowledges that it is a lot. However, this is just a brief glimpse of some of the things that he experienced growing up. And so he wanted to capture some of that within the context of this book. But I enjoyed it. This was a four star read for me. I did. I really did enjoy it. This is amazing because I put four eyes on here, which the, based on the ratings, four eyes by Rex Ogle, which is Ray's pen name, um, did very, very well in the middle grade community. I, however, was not a fan. I was, n I was not a huge fan of Four Eyes. There were some things that were going on, like the family dynamics that I didn't enjoy, but I think this one is, is better written than the other one. Child finna go outside and say, listen, I don't know where their mama at because I swear she don't be watching them kids at all. And they be wandering their little behinds into my yard. I'm finna step outside, go in your yard. Don't be in my backyard doing no foolishness like that. And it's late at that. It is late. I'm finna go outside. All right. The next one that I ended up reading was Layers, which is a memoir by Penelope. Um, I don't want to say butcher her last name. It is French. Um, and it's amazing because I took French. I studied abroad in France and I have lost everything that I have learned. Inevitably, it's horrible. But this is this is hilarious, but also heartbreaking. Uh, this is my first time reading any of Penelope's works. I know that she won an Eisner in 2019 for her work on um, looking at um, impactful and famous women all throughout history. And so I was like, I wanted to read that one, but I was like, you know what, I need to go back and really, um, I'm going to focus on this one and then I'll go back and I'll read that one. But Layers is, is just literally, I think it's 16 stories, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's 16 um short stories about her childhood and teen years and some of them i really really resonated with um some of them i'm like yeah i totally get that being a teenager and doing x y and z or making these decisions and having absolutely no idea what you're doing um some of it was extremely heartbreaking there is content warnings in here for sexual assault um which she experiences multiple times and she wrote it with um the way she did it was very very interesting and i don't want to show it because i don't want to spoil it but she compared like her experiences as a child experienced sexual sexual assault as a child and then again as um as an older teen and she did it like panel by panel like side by side and i was like oh my goodness gracious like this is it it really hurt my feelings to know that so many women and men do experience these things, right? And the, the, the manner in which you think about it doesn't change. The shame that you feel doesn't change. There wasn't much variation, which is the unique part of it, is that she was illustrating that there wasn't much variation in her thought processes from when she was younger to when she got older, experiencing the same exact thing. Almost the situations were very paralleling in how they actually happen. And, you know, she showed her mother being very concerned about her, a friend being very concerned about her, but her thought process and responses were very much so the same. And, um just being just how impactful that was for her um growing up and wanting to essentially like have superpowers that way that she didn't have to worry about you know men inappropriately touching her but there were also some lighter moments she captures a lot of her romances she captures those moments that we all go through where you're in a situation and you've just been trudging along and then you have this epiphany and you're like i don't need to be in this situation anymore like what what in the and she does that with a couple of partners that she encounters and I find that to be very interesting she talks about puberty um she talks about you know her first sexual encounters and how uh naive and unaware she was about like safe sex practices which I always go back to like I understand as a parent no one wants to think about their child even doing such things um but she didn't even have the tools to appropriately engage in with in sex in a healthy and safe way i think that there are going to be some cultural things that are different here like the the leniency that people will see in terms of like what she was able to do as a parisian teen um or as a french teen as opposed to um what you would see like 
teens being able to do here, um, at least in my household, like being able to go out and stay up all night and then not come back to the next morning while living under my mother's roof was just not a thing. Like that wasn't finna happen um, at all. <laughs> like not unless I was going to spend the night at a friend's house, but going out by myself and just partying and coming back, it's it just, no, that's just not a thing. Um, I think she also grew up during a different time period. I think things have changed drastically in how we, um, approach raising kids and the dangers that exist you know people used to leave their front doors open and stuff like that and now you can't do nothing like that you know what i'm saying so um this was all in black and white but penelope i like her art style it reminds me of like old school like comic threads and some of her artwork i think is very refined and other place it it's not as refined but I think it just it just worked well and I, I enjoy this. this is another four star one for me and I'm looking forward to um picking up her other work because I think just I think she is a a creator that I would continuously pick up time after time now next things um I need to figure out what I'm reading next I'm gonna have to kind of push through and read quite a bit quite quickly because at the time of me sitting down and doing this show, um, I have not been responsible. And this happened to me when we did this video earlier this year. I have not been responsible and done everything that I needed to do in order to make sure that this video is going to be finished and done and ready to go by the time that, you know, things happen on the 7th. Unfortunately, um, I am not going to be reacting to a winner because there is no winner for me. Um, like I talked about before, we all know who the winner would be in this situation. And unfortunately, I just, you know, whatever. But the next two things that I do plan on picking up are going to be Family Style, um, which is uh, Memories of an American Family from Vietnam. And then also um, Night Fever by uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. And these are both relatively short. Um, in terms of both text and length, they're not text heavy at all, especially family style. Family style, I probably could finish in like half an hour if I tried. So my goal is probably to at least get through these two tonight. I need to do a significant account, a, a significant amount of reading um, because I'm only halfway through my intended list. And so I have just a couple of days to read 10 volumes of things or 10 things which can be done um it doesn't take me as long to read graphic novels and stuff as it takes me to read other things but after that i probably will try reading maybe bell of the ball is a possibility um i also need to think about reading um lights which is the third book in the sheets which i know would have definitely made the list at some point but also uh, something is Killing the Children, Volume 6, I need to read because that's a possibility to make the list as well. But we're just going to we're just going to go with it. We're going to go with it and we're going to see what I can get done tonight. I probably will not check in with y'all until tomorrow, but we shall see. All right, I'm out.
hello i am here y'all to do the final clip for this video um so i just wanted to give y'all a heads up and say that i did not end up reading 20 which is fine i wanted to read as much as possible and um with a little one getting sick and stuff like that some things have been altered and changed and so we ended up um 17 things that i think should have ended up at least 17 things which uh, more than 10 of these I well I've read all of them but for this video I've read quite a few of them um, so let's do a recap I know I started with this original list and then I changed everything and then just going it's just been a whole it's been a whole thing um, so I did recommend Hungry Ghost Parachute Kids North Ranger Princess in the Grilled Cheese Paper Planes In Limbo Four Eyes, which is one I didn't really talk about, but I, well, maybe I talked about it in the last clip. I think I did. School Trip, which is the third book in the New Kids series. Uh, Squished, which is uh, a very, very good one about, like, family dynamics. Um, it's Megan Wagner Lord or Lloyd Wagner. I always get her names kind of confused there. But another great release from her about family dynamics, about... Um, you know, the adjustments that come with moving, about being one of the oldest siblings. It was done very, very well with beautiful, beautiful artwork. It's a middle grade one. Talked about layers. A ghost book is one that came out this year that has kind of like a spooky element to it, but is very, very sad. It focuses on a young girl who is able to see this ghost of another kid that essentially has um, difficulty staying in the living world he kind of shifts back and forth between the living and and the dead and she's the only person that can see him and so she has this gift and she doesn't have a great relationship with her father after um the loss of her mother and so the two of them build this interesting relationship and it explores death and grieving and compassion and friendship and family dynamics as well which was really really well done um, and then we have Family Style, which is one that I had not talked about. So Family Style is like, hands down, one of the best graphic novels that I've read this year. Um, I gave it a 4.5 stars when I reviewed it on Goodreads. It follows this um, Vietnamese family as they come from Vietnam to the United States. And it starts when our author is very, very young. Um, and it tells a story because it's not the first time that I've read any story about the experience of coming from Vietnam to America, especially during the Vietnam War. But this one explicitly uses food as its starting points for everything. You okay? Yeah? Sick baby. Oh, I'm sorry, stink. Um... It uses food as this baseline for the communication um, of his story, and I loved it. Uh, the artwork was absolutely stunning. It delves into so many interesting concepts, especially those that um, talk about wanting to come to a country, becoming assimilated to that country, and becoming so assimilated to that country that you inevitably lose your own culture. And so I found that to be just so well done the artwork was amazing i think the only issue that i had with family style is that i felt like there were these shifts in time that just did not work as well as i was hoping so it's just these time jumps that are not as good um as i think that the author was intending so family style was another one that i read bell of the ball is a young adult graphic novel which i ended up reading as well it follows two main characters who used to be childhood friends and they had a good relationship when they were kids but as they get older they kind of like go their separate ways and one of our main characters doesn't recognize the other but um the one that doesn't recognize the other is currently dating a cheerleader and the cheerleader recruits the second main character to help tutor um because she wants to make sure that the both of them are going to college together and so that was pretty you know of course, that causes interesting dynamics. So when our two characters get together to start tutoring each other, they realize that they still have a lot in common like they did when they were kids. And the relationship dynamic that one of the main characters has with this cheerleader is not healthy. Um, she She's just not... She's very focused on herself. She's not focused on the dynamic of, of her partner or the relationship. And so the two of them get along relatively well um and they really enjoy each other's company and of course you know th things start to build between the two of them and yes it does conveniently work out for both of them i did have some questions about like the epilogue aspect of this one 
which I thought was a little strange, but overall I thought it was really, really great. I love that um, the creator in this one chose to stay with hues of pink um, because I think it really, really worked for this as well, especially with the emphasis on like, you know, who can be a princess? Is there anything wrong with wanting to be a princess? Um, of course, we're dealing with queer relationships. It was just, it was well written. I enjoyed it. I, I'm happy to see so many different um, graphic novels coming out now for a young adult audience. I think I talked about this earlier where it's not that they didn't exist, but now they're carving out of space specifically for young adult graphic novels so that just makes me really really happy um I read basil and oregano which I was not a huge fan of not going to lie to you I was not a huge fan of basil and oregano this one explicitly follows two characters um who are at this magic cooking school I think the art was too digitized it felt like animation stuck on a piece of paper with me it made it feel very uh two-dimensional i'm not sure how to explain that but there's this magical um cooking school that all these kids go to and they're supposed to like excel and one of the uh, main characters is going because her dad's have sent her she's really passionate about cooking but she's trying to be the top student because if she's a top student for a certain amount of time she gets tuition reimbursement and so she um wants to be able to pay her dad's back that money I just thought that the pacing of this one was very uneven this is another one that had some very weird time jump things going on that didn't really work well for the context of the story I love the concept but I think the actual delivery of this one just didn't hold up the way that the author may have intended for it to hold up I also like the conversation about um, how financial barriers uh, deplete access to to great educational opportunities um, there were some great conversations about being yourself because um, oregano uh, wants to wants to do traditional cooking which they call archaic like cooking with pots and pans and not magic but her mother is just not down for it because her mother has these high expectations of her that just are not great so um, I gave that one like three three and a half was not my favorite um, I also read Beowulf which is a retelling of Beowulf this was excellent Oh my goodness, this was excellent, y'all. Five star read. This one is going to get, I feel like this one has potential to get an award for something at some point in life because this, oh man, I wish that the author, the author is not from um, the United States or its territories and so it's not eligible for a Caldecott. But the artwork in this is superb. It is the best artwork that I have seen out of any of the graphic novels that I have mentioned just like right now. Out of all of the graphic novels that I have mentioned, Beowulf has the top tier artwork. Um, it is very detailed and it's black and white, full sketches. And it literally is a retelling of Beowulf that is accessible to kids. It follows these kids who, you know, they want to be kids. But they have this dark character that is an adult that does not like the fact that kids like to have fun. And so he sneaks into their, like, treehouse and all he has to do is, like, tap their heads and then they turn into teenagers. They turn into adults. And they forget the meaning of being a kid. And the language was very much so... I don't know how to explain it because this is one I think you have to read to get what I'm about to say. It is written as if you would traditionally see Old English but in a way that is accessible for kids. It definitely has the Old English uh, lyrical vibe to it, epic poem vibe to it, but it's not inaccessible. And I, I'm so fascinated by how the author was able to do this because if there's anything about me I struggle with classics sometimes because I feel like the language is not accessible for everyone um, and I can understand um, why it would be written in a way that's not accessible for for everyone but this was very much so mimicking that language but not in a way where a 10 year old would pick this up and be like I have no idea what they're talking about. It's whimsical, it's fun, it's engaging, it's this huge commentary on like having like maintaining your inner child at least for me reading it as an adult it's so easy to see like how kids are so carefree and they have fun and they engage in you know just things that make them happy. Okay, get some tissue baby. Okay. I'm so sick. Um, but yeah, um, it, it just shows like how kids just like to have fun. They engage in all types of things that just make them happy. And we lose that as we become teenagers, as we become adults. All of, all of that is gone. But when I tell y'all the artwork in Beowulf was epic, I mean, that was a five-star read for me. 
that was a hands down five star read for me. Um, I ended up reading two more things. Um, which is Something's Killing the Children, Volume 6. Um, I can't really say much about this one because it's number six in the series, although I think because of its popularity, it did have potential to possibly be a Goodreads uh, Choice nominee. Um, I gave it four stars. Erica is in some Sugar Honey Iced Tea, y'all. I can't, you know, kiddos down here. She's in some Sugar Honey Iced Tea. I am not sure how she's going to manage in Volume 7. That does not come out till next year. But she has gotten into some stuff stuff in volume six. I am enjoying it. Four star read for me. And the last thing that I ended up reading y'all was Moth. Um, this is another middle grade graphic novel that is fantastical. Um, very interesting storytelling about these groups of beings that build a relationship with um, the spirit of the moon and they live at night and, and function during the nighttime instead of during the daytime. It is beautiful. It is a huge story about not um, or understanding that you're not going to always completely conquer your fears. Um, there's seamless diversity in all of this. It's a, a, a commentary on what happens when we have parental neglect um, in, in a child's life. It talks about what it means to um, burn yourself out because you're trying to live up to this high standard. Because our main character, the whole essence of the story is that the main character is becoming the new moth keeper and because these are like people of the night um they made this agreement with the, with the um with the moon spirit basically that um she would gift them with these moths and these moths would pollinate this tree and provide them with abundance um because they've kept her company and so this main character um has lived basically in this feeling or this state of solitude and they feel like they can handle the job not really realizing how much the job really entails and also the community not realizing that a job like this shouldn't be set aside for one person um a job like this is going to entail some or is going to need some support from other characters uh, the art Work was great I think that this one wasn't top of the line for me it didn't it didn't push it to like a four or five or a five I thought it was beautifully written I thought the artwork was beautiful there is a glimpse that we get of um I think her name is Anya's uh past life and especially like her relationship dynamics with her mother but we don't get um a full-blown picture of that it's we get a glimpse and I feel like we would have understood her more as a character if that aspect of it would have been developed more so um so that's 17 recommendations that I could personally give. I know typically it's 20. The three that I didn't finish or didn't get to um, was the Infinity Particle, the Talk, and Lights. I still will read those three. Um, I definitely think that Lights would have been um, in the top 10, but I can't for like I can't say for sure because I haven't read it. Um, the Talk definitely would have been I I think in the <laughs> in the top 10. Is it 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 is a powerful graphic novel. Um, and has already won some awards as it is, so I would not be surprised. But if from the ones that I had to list, if I had to give you a top 10, I would say Hungry Ghost, which this one has content warnings. I don't think I talked about this one in detail in this specific video, but I've talked about it on my channel. This one deals with looking at familial expectations, um, especially as it applies to body image and how that leads to eating disorders. Um, and it is the author's experience working through her own personal experience with eating disorders. It is very, very emotional and one that I think that you need to be sure that you are in the right headspace to go into. So I probably would say for my top 10, The Princess and the Grilled Cheese, Hungry Ghosts, I think Parachute Kids would have done very, very well. Um, I'm thinking that, ooh, this is Family Style would have been in the top 10 for me as well. Uh, Beowulf would have been in the top 10 for me. Something's Killing the Children. Moth would have been in the top 10 for me. And Limbo is in the top 10 for me. Um, ju -ju 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 -ju. North Ranger would have been in the top 10 for me. And Bell of the Ball. Now, out of those 10, if I had to come up with um, a top 5, The Princess and the Grilled Cheese would be in the top 5. Beowulf would be in the top 5. Um, goodness gracious, this is actually, this is actually kind of hard. So let's say Princess and the Grilled Cheese, Beowulf, oh man, um, ooh, Family Style would definitely be in the top five for me, uh, Parachute Kids would be in the top five, and Something is Killing the Children. 
out of those top five, my winner for the Goodreads Choice Awards would have been Beowulf. That would not have been nominated. That would not have won. Um, I don't think that this would have gotten as much recognition as it should have. I'm going to go back before I close this video and explain something as well. I did not end up reading uh, Laura Olympus. I made the decision not to read Laura Olympus. And the reason why I made the decision not to read Laura Olympus is because of the fact that we all know that Laura Olympus is that graphic novel that is highly recognizable that everyone would have voted for. And I don't think I needed the space to promote that or provide space to promote that title anymore. It gets enough promotion. I think that this was an opportunity for me to promote titles that were probably lesser known um, that people are not as familiar with. And that's why I decided to nix Laura Olympus. I don't have a problem with Laura Olympus. Like I said, I've read Laura Olympus. I enjoyed it, but it is so popular at this point that, um, it doesn't need any more exposure and while it would have made this list it would have been the winner I don't need to give it that space this now turned into an opportunity for me to recommend some things for you that I think should have been um good Reach choice awards nominees or winners and so that's 17 different titles also these additional three that you can read on your own that I do plan on reading I hope you all have liked this video I know it's a bit chaotic but it's kind of hard to do this without having like a set list of nominees and how much things can change in terms of like what's available because I wasn't going to spend any money on this project but i hope you all have enjoyed if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me hit the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications and um if you're looking for ways to support the channel follow me on social media all the links will be down in the description box below and i'll be back with a, another video soon bye, bye. <laughs>